take a bubble bath or just put your bare feet on the earth. Yesterday I was very, um, hey Ian, <laughs> how are you doing? I'm doing just fine. Good. I oh, you've got, you've got professional. You've got the microphone. Yeah. Oh, I, I did, <laughs> but I can't use it. And I have to use like AirPods or whatever. Okay. You know, whatever works. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, welcome to Soul Sessions. We're glad to have everybody here. Uh, this is my friend Ian Roth. Um, he is the podcast host and creator of the Regression Session podcast, and he and it is a guide to past lives and the metaphysical. Is that right? <laughs> For now, yes. Yes. <laughs> okay, and then you also offer spiritual hypnosis services. Is that correct? Yeah, that is correct. I do like, um, I guess I call it like chakra charging. I do something called core realignment. I do past life regressions and stuff like that. Oh, okay. I love that. Okay. So what made you want to start your podcast? And what is your podcast generally about? I know it says it in the title, <clears throat> but <laughs> if you want to delve well, a little more deeper into it. <laughs> it's it's, it's kind of like a long story, right? Because I, I grew up, I grew up Mormon. And then I, and then I left the church. And when you grow up Mormon, you're told that like, that you're going to have your family with you forever after you die and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Um, and then I left and all of a sudden that wasn't a thing anymore. And I was just kind of like struggling. And then I was, I, I like stumbled into the concept of near death experiences. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't, I'm not sure if you are familiar with near death experiences too much i am but if you could explain it for the other for anybody else that might have questions about that that would be great <laughs> yes so near-death experiences like with with <clears throat> modern medical technology it's becoming more and more common for people to like medically die mm -hmm. and then be resuscitated and when they medically die they have an experience so they'll, they'll go to another place or they'll see like loved ones or or you know, deceased loved ones or, or like Jesus or Buddha or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. um, with those near-death experiences, there's actually quite a bit of commonality between like cross-culturally, uh, cross cross-race, cross-religion and things like that. And so that kind of made me really interested about like, oh, maybe there is something to this because there's, you know, millions of cases and there's so many commonalities between all of them across all different dividers if you want to call them mm -hmm. that and that led me to like looking into past lives and reincarnation i was looking for a show that had people's stories as well as like expert commentary and people mm -hmm. who know like know what they're doing i couldn't find one so i was like geez i guess i'll just have to make it myself and i did innovation <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Adapt, improvise, <laughs> and overcome. Yes. <laughs> and that's great that you saw a need for that. And there is because there's so many people that experience those things, but don't have a collective hub to like validate their experience. Like, oh, this has happened to me too. <laughs> right. And yeah. so that's beautiful. And you have many different people from many different walks of life that come onto your show. Yep. Normal people, like average everyday people I get, I get messages from and I have like some authors, I have some scientists, uh, I have like, I did an episode with the former president of the American Association for Hypnotherapy. Oh, okay, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, and he was yeah. all about it. He was like, yeah, I, I stumbled into past life regression when, because he did like smoking cessation and weight loss hypnosis. Okay. And then he stumbled into it, which is kind of telling to me as far as like, if a professional like that is going to stumble into it. Um, it gives a lot more credibility in my eyes. I feel like oftentimes when people get into like past lives, they stumble into it. <laughs> like, no, it, it's, it's, it's seriously it. not me, but like a lot of people do. They'll, they'll actually be like trying, like, for example, Dr. Brian Weiss, he's like the, I guess the poster boy for past life regression. Cause he went on like Oprah and stuff like that. And then, and then he stumbled across past lives and whatever he called them masters and all that stuff but yeah he totally stumbled upon it so did this gentleman called dr michael newton another pioneer who um has like a, a school for learning past life progression he stumbled into it mm -hmm. and then 
went through like a whole process of like, okay, this is what I think happens when you die. Then you go here, 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 and here. And then you reincarnate. Do you feel like a lot of people that have these experiences like past lives or not past lives, but NDEs, like they have collective experiences. Like they, they experience a lot of the similar things. Yes. Yeah, they do. Um, a lot of the time they'll experience what's called a life review. Mm -hmm. um, and that can even be taken in, in like the common phrase of, of your life flashes before your eyes, right? Mm -hmm. what's, what's really common about that is that people, when they, <clears throat> when they have these life reviews, they're, they're not only experiencing their life from their own point of view, what they're doing is they're experiencing it from their point of view and then everybody's point of view around them that they experienced in like a ripple effect. So they're seeing how okay. they experience or how, let's just say, Brittany, you and I are walking down the street in opposite directions and you bump into me and I go, Hey, Brittany, you know, screw you. Uh -huh. And then I flip you off. Right. And then you go on to have like a bad day. Well, I would experience how my actions of flipping you off and telling you to screw off or whatever, have, like affected your day, essentially. Right. So you, you experience all those things and that's actually fairly common. And so people tend to come back from these things is like changed people. They can't really go back to who they were before because mm -hmm. they know how they're, they're acutely aware of how their actions affect other people. Interesting. Okay. I have a question for you with that. <laughs> mm -hmm. I want to read Oriana's comment here. <laughs> Um, she says, I'm always curious how quantum entanglement applies to medical death. Like you connect to all your, your universal bits in many universes. <laughs> uh, it's very interesting. <laughs> well, I mean, so. yeah, from, from what I've seen as far as that goes, and it's, it's like, and I always quote this dude, his name's Andy Sway. He's, mm -hmm. he's like a guru. Uh, I, he puts it so concisely. I don't even know why I have a podcast anymore, but <laughs> it's, it's like, he said this, he said, you, and I'm quoting almost directly, I, I swear I have this quote memorized, but he says, you don't have a past life. You are a past life, right? It, it's like it, you spent your whole life identifying as pinky. Mm -hmm. So the idea of thumb is like this mystical concept, right? Mm -hmm. But as soon as you start to identify as hand, all of a sudden, all the other pieces, like your your fingers are just there. You're like, oh, yeah, of course I have, like, a thumb and fingers. And, and my other friend, when I was doing a core realignment for him, he was like, yeah, I, I'm, I can understand now that I'm, like, a, a single grain of sand along a beach, but I can also identify as the beach or I can identify as the grain of sand. So, like, as far as quantum entanglement, quantum healing, all that quantum physics stuff it's all it's all kind of weird because you come to slowly understand that like we're all part of the same thing we're all like the hand i love that that's beautiful and i tell people when i work with their spirit guides that if you are with the core belief that we're all from one source point all of those beings are you there are you living a different experience and reverberating back to you a different perspective <laughs> But mm -hmm. like you are Jesus, you are Buddha, <laughs> like all right. these guys yeah, are just you in a different perspective lens. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And it's all, it's all you. So like by healing yourself, you're healing Ian and you're mm -hmm. healing Brittany and you're healing whoever out there, everybody, anybody, doesn't matter. Yeah, exactly. Because when we heal us, we're go we're stepping out into one the collective consciousness but every individual that we have contact with we're from a more healed space which changes their frequency <laughs> when we interact right. with it too yes um yeah okay and oh, go ahead go ahead go oh ahead. no you're, you're good <laughs> i totally just lost what i was gonna say oh it's like <laughs> I, it, was, it was just like some random thing so go ahead um so i had a question about the ndes so you said that when people have these NDEs, they come back and then they have different experiences because they're living from a, like more awareness of their actions. Right. Right. Okay. Do you think that somewhere on their soul contract that they set up to have that experience? So it would maybe drastically alter their timeline. 
That's an interesting question because the answer can, could be yes and it could be no. So mm -hmm. if you go by like Michael Newton's work, the answer would be yes. They did make a contract to do that because they um, – he has what they call exit points, mm -hmm. right? So you – you get to essentially choose or like you have a, a way out that you give yourself like a way out. So you die, right? Mm -hmm. And you go through this experience. You could stay dead mm -hmm. according to Michael Newton. Like you could stay dead, but then you choose to come back. Right. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> those exit points, there's some people will take them and be like, okay, you know, I, I can't really learn much more from this life. So that's kind of like the Michael Newton, um, Michael Newtonian view on it. If you look at like Dolores Cannon, she looks at it as as like um, you're you're having these experiences to boost your vibration or, or whatever, mm -hmm. right? Like so, every single thing that you've ever done is planned. And basically, free will is an illusion. Mm -hmm. Right. So there's different views on it, but the general consensus as far as it goes is like these accidents or these uh, these deaths are planned um, allegedly. And then when you when you come back, it's like your choice. You're choosing to continue on and learn lessons. But um, allegedly, everybody chooses the exact way and time of their death, their their actual death. So it's like. You have all these other exit points you could take, but you're going to take this exit point no matter what at the end. Mm -hmm. That's that's basically what it comes down to from what I've seen in, in my research. So it's almost like you preemptively created a point in your timeline to create choice of whether you wanted to come back or not. But if you choose to come back, like Dolores Cannon, you're saying if things aren't really like free will, free choice, like that's already known. Like what that? <laughs> like yeah, you it, it's forget like because you're uh, in the lifetime timeline. <laughs> yeah, and that's where you get into the the conversation of of like is is free will an illusion? Like yeah, okay. So for example, like I I could choose to take this this jug of water and like dump it all over my computer right now, mm -hmm. right? I could definitely do that, but, but like, who's to say that I'm, that I was supposed to do that or if that was like a choice that I'm supposed to make, like nobody can know for sure. And, and that's like, it's like a sandbox concept where, where you're in this, this like simulation and you can choose to do whatever. Like I could go outside and jump up and down in my yard mm -hmm. and I could sit here all day and do nothing. Right. It's all about, like, and, and, it, and it doesn't, does it really matter though? Like, yeah, that's the question is like, does it matter if free will is an illusion or not? Because we, if it is an illusion, we, we have it and we can do mm -hmm. it, but it's, I don't know. These concepts are, are pretty like, they're interesting to talk about, but they're not super practical to talk about. It's all philosophical. Yeah. It's very, it's very esoteric. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and that's and that's another thing too. So if we're in this living body avatar, right? But then our higher self up here, who made our soul contracts, is it free will because our higher self made the contract for us to fulfill, right? Or is it not because our avatar is following what the higher self did for us? Right? <laughs> and so you can get like real lateral into it. <laughs> Yeah, and you can go down this rabbit hole, but like I said, it's it's kind of all like philosophical, and it's it's I I call it kind of like fluff because mm -hmm. all this philosophical stuff is interesting, but really like the purpose of what I do in my show and stuff like that is to heal people, and so all this stuff it it's interesting, but it's not gonna help you like heal if that makes sense. Uh, do you mean that about. sometimes people like bypass from what is going on in the current like 3D here because they get very wrapped up in like the past live esoteric in the past or those well, they, like philosophical things? Yeah, they get lost in the details. They get lost in, in the 
in in the fluff in the cloud, right? Well, yeah. A lot of people will either forget that they're living a, that they are a physical being because you still have to like you still have to go scrub your toilet and do the dishes <laughs> and walk your dog <laughs> and change your cat's litter box you got, and feed your kid. You have to still do all that stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So it's if you're just living in the clouds and stuff, you're gonna get too far away from what I've seen. And it's all about like a balance. You you have to have a balance while you're here on Earth, and that's what like our our society is really missing a side of that. It's really missing like the spiritual side of things, mm -hmm. where they are trying to heal from within instead of from outside in. I think that's a great perspective. And when I read people's Akashic records, I stipulate with them beforehand, your guides and the pinnacle, the record keepers are going to show you in what's going to help you in this lifetime. So if that is a past life that you can glean information from and bring here to help you on this timeline, they'll show you. But if it's information you're trying to glean to try and bypass, like what's going on in this human body experience, they will not show me that. <laughs> no, and you won't how be are we able gonna to utilize this for our healing in this one. <laughs> right. And it's like if you if if you're gonna try to skip you're not gonna get anywhere if you don't learn your lesson. Right. Mm -hmm. And I don't even necessarily believe in like learning lessons. I kind of believe in just like growth in general. For me personally, I believe that we're just here to experience. I don't think that it's necessarily like, oh, I chose to break my leg when I was seven and then I can't walk for the rest of my life to learn what it's like to not do that. Like maybe, but I think it's all just like an experience and whatever experience you're having is what you're going to be needing at the time or what you were drawn to at the time, mm -hmm. you know? I also like that you're very practical. Like we like sometimes like spirituality, like you said, gets real like detached. <laughs> yeah. And I like that. Like there's, there's, there's people like you that bridge that gap with the practicality. Like how is this helping us right now? <laughs> right. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. It gets really far out there. There's a lot. Of, and I've talked to a lot of people that are, are really, really, um, I'll, I'll just, I'll just call it. They're really, uh, all in They're They're all in. Mm -hmm. There's two sides. There's like all in and all out. There's not that many people that are like that try to ride that middle line. I try to ride the middle line. I mean, I've had some crazy experiences when I've been doing spiritual hypnosis mm -hmm. that I can't explain. So like the far out people, the people who don't believe it at all, um, I can't identify with them. But I've also, I, I haven't seen like, Oh, the earth is like transitioning to 5D and we're, and we're, you know, we're all evolving spiritually and raising our collective vibration. I'm not seeing that either. So I can't be on that crowd. Um, and I just kind of like to stay right in the middle. Yeah. And that's the thing too, like perspective, like we say all these things and they're true for us, but then other people's experiences are true for them. <laughs> Right. So it takes people that are all the way out, all the way in, and that are in the middle, so we can all have <laughs> this nice collective experience of different things together. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so I wanted to ask you a little bit about what your sessions look like, because it sounds like there's many different facets and ways in which you work with people. And so I'd love to hear more about that, like a one-on-one -on -one session with someone. <laughs> it really depends on what you're looking for. You know, it, I've had people reach out to me and say, I feel like I'm missing something in my life. I feel mm -hmm. I, I've been going to therapy and I've been looking for all this stuff that I can't find. And that's when it's like, okay, um, I have like a little questionnaire. I have people fill out like, okay, why are you looking to do this? What's, what's the point? Um, what are you trying to accomplish? And have you gone to therapy before? Have you tried hypnosis <laughs> before? So all this information helps me kind of determine where you're at. Cause sometimes you just need talk therapy, right? You need to yeah. go to a traditional therapist, especially if you're dealing with problems in this life. So I, if, if you're doing like a, a past life regression out of curiosity, then I'm all for it. If you're looking for something that like, um, I'm not sure. I think it'd be okay to share. I had, I had a woman reach out to me and, um, she's like, she was unable to have her own kids. Mm -hmm. Right. And so she was wondering like, why? And we went through a 
life between life regression, which is different than past life regression. And we kind of found out the point of that. And then that's kind of like the Michael Newton side of things where you plan everything out. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I also do other things that aren't hypnosis. So core realignment, it's basically neuro linguistic programming. So you go through and you work on your own emotions and it's not hypnosis. Okay. Um, but really what it is, is I, I'll sit you down. If it's a hypnosis, we'll start relaxing your body and then take you to your own inner landscape where you feel safe. And then we'll find the location that you have to go to to get to a past life. Mm -hmm. If it's the neuro linguistic programming, the first step is to feel whatever emotion you're running away from. Mm. I think that's, that's vitally, I think that's vitally, vitally important because you know emotions get stuck and trapped in your body and they harden and they crystalline, <laughs> and so it makes mm -hmm. you feel very dense and creates disease within you. Yeah, and it can. I mean, I even have a physical example of that, so I can totally buy into that. Like, anxiety will kill you. Yes. <laughs> it will kill you. And and working through that anxiety is not easy, but it's simple. It's, it's a lot more simple than people think. It's just the very first step is to feel that anxiety. And there's a lot more steps from that, but... That, that's pretty much it. <laughs> Basically, the, a session, you sit down, you figure out what it is that you need if you just need help with like feelings and we can, it's seriously like 45 minutes tops. The past life regressions are like an hour, an hour 45, depending on how in depth you go, how deep you go into hypnosis. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, it's pretty simple. It's, you, most people will leave being like, man, I just feel like I took like a really nice long nap. Oh, <laughs> uh, could you explain a little bit between, I know you do past lives, like going back, right? And you mentioned life to life. Could you mention that or talk about that a little bit more? What does a life to life look like? Okay, yeah. So uh, a past life regression is fairly straightforward. A past life regression is you go into hypnosis and you experience a past life and then you wake up, mm -hmm. w wake up, right? A life between life regression is you experience a past life in hypnosis, and then you die in that past life. And then you go to the life between lives. So like the, the planning station or the spirit realm. And Michael Newton has a whole series of books about this where it's fairly common for people to see loved ones and go through another life review so you can get to that life review without doing an and then your death experience mm -hmm. through the through the life between life and then you go through and they have like a, a spiritual uh cleansing or a healing or like a it's almost like a bath chamber for your spirit that they go through mm -hmm. uh, and then they go through they call it like the council of elders well you'll you'll go through and talk about your own growth it's almost like uh like a peer review. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Like a, oh, like like a you thesis, review your a thesis own of life. your life and peer review. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And, and, then, and then it's like a council. There's usually like six, six uh, advanced souls there. Um, and then you go and you plan out your next life. And it gets like, it gets super crazy, like super in depth in Michael Newton's books. And I kind of have a problem with it. Like a gripe about the whole Michael Newton thing, but. Anyway, that, that's the difference. Okay, so you said that when you go there, you plan out your next life. So that's the one that you're going to incarnate in in the next one after this one. Yes. No, or not could it be, Or could it be potentially like even like one way further in the future? It could be. I mean, that's, that's called future life progression. And that's okay. really, really rare. <laughs> I, okay. I have not even experienced that. I've seen it. I've seen it done on, and it's like on accident. Mm -hmm. Like they'll hypnotize someone. And they'll be like, oh my God, I'm on a spaceship right now. Interesting. I'm a human from earth. Like earth is screwed up or whatever. Like mm -hmm. we're 500 years in the future. And we're, so that's future life progression. The life between life is most commonly, if you have the intention of that, it's the life you lived right before this one. Mm -hmm. And then you planned out this one from that one. So you get to see 
like planned plot points for well i'll go back to the example so I'm are you of, are you viewing your soul contract at that point for this lifetime yeah kind of it's okay it's like a blueprint almost like people have seen like a blueprint um they'll see planned plot points that they've already experienced that they've mapped out on their blueprint for their life and so that that blueprint for example showed this woman before like not being able to have kids mm -hmm. on her blueprint and she's like oh i planned this out and then it's like okay well what's the reason like what was your reasoning for putting that on your blueprint why did you why did you choose to not have kids even though you really want to mm -hmm. um and then most of the time you'll get an answer like oh it's because of this i was supposed to accomplish this and that's that's what the life between lives is really for is like helping people deal with things out that's outside of their control and helping mm -hmm. them find a reason for it like even if it's not real it's still a real experience and that's all that matters to me because it's all about like the healing that's so interesting that sounds like it could be immensely healing for people especially that have been through very traumatic situations in their lives and have that answer or that question of why like, why did all of this happen to me? And not saying, like, everything you experience isn't the fault of someone else, right? <laughs> but it can, it can show right. a grander scope, like, objective perspective on things. Yeah, and, and that's not to say that everything that happens to you is your fault. Right. Because we still have free will here. Mm -hmm. um, other people's choices are going to affect you. I mean, and it all comes down, again, to, like, how you look at it. I mean, if, if someone gets horribly maimed in a car accident, that's that's still nothing to be like, oh, well, that was planned. You know what I mean? It, it can, having this information, it, it could really kind of lead down a, like a rabbit hole of, oh, well, it was planned, so it doesn't matter. It's fine. And you can ignore other people's problems because of it, but that's that's not the goal. It's It's just like to help people understand why. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, and that's, and that's what I find when I'm reading for people too. like the guides show them something that they're not going to bypass or not yeah. process through of like, well, I planned it out. <laughs> like, so I'm not gonna be upset about it. Right. <laughs> you can still be upset about the thing, even if it was, you know, predetermined plans on your lifetime plan. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, and it's like, they're not, when, when they go through these planning sessions, they're not seeing anything. Like, they will not be allowed to see anything that hasn't happened yet. Yeah, Even right. I've tried so hard. <laughs> like, I've pushed so hard. I'm like, just look harder. <laughs> and, and they, uh, they can't see it. They will, like, a lot of the time, they'll get a, a, blinding, a blinding light, like a white light that flashes in their head. And that makes sense, because it would be very boring if you knew everything that was going to happen, right? <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, and then you'd fight against it if it was undesirable, or you'd yeah. fight towards it, and every life decision you made would be to get to that point yeah. or avoid that point. That makes sense. So how do you get people into the hyp hypnotic state? How do you take them that deep within themselves? Can you explain that process a little bit, how your hypno hypnosis practice? Yes. So um, it's – there's a – different ways you can do it and most commonly nowadays people use mental imagery dolores cannon is a pioneer of this technique right so anybody any dolores cannon fans out there will appreciate this because she was one of the first people that didn't have like a pocket watch like dangling in front of like Ooh, watch the pocket <laughs> i tried watch, to do that right? with my sister when i was <laughs> when i was little <laughs> Yeah, and yeah. I, I'm pretty sure every kid has because it's it's like um, Hollywood, yeah. right? So, ooh, watch this thing and you'll be hypnotized. But really what you do is um, I do a lot of my sessions over Zoom, mm -hmm. right? And so you're in your own house and then you'll just get comfy on like a couch or a bed or whatever and lay down. And I always start at the tips of your toes and I help. I It's like, Hayden, so we're going to unstring – from the tips of your toes and then we work slowly up the body until you get to the crown of your head 
Um, and then, you know, before that, I usually just have people like pick a spot on the ceiling or the wall or, or wherever they want to stare that's comfortable. And then they eventually usually just close their eyes naturally. But if they don't, it's like, okay, now you can close your eyes. Mm-hmm. I bring people's attention to their to their own feelings that they have in their body too, because it really helps to bring, like cut away all of the stray thoughts and things. Mm-hmm. If you're just present, if you can get to where you're just present in your own existence it it can help a lot more so you i bring their attention to their body their their thoughts their emotions and things like that Mm -hmm. and then we relax them from their toes up once they do that you can either create a landscape inside your head it could be like a memory it could be a garden or like a forest or a beach or whatever so like any place that makes you feel safe Mm -hmm you're going to find yourself there. And then from there, anything can happen. But, you know, for a lot lot of the time for first time people, they need a lot more guidance. Mm -hmm. If you've done it a lot of times, um, like for me, I could probably just slip right into another existence just after I was hypnotized like that. Mm Mm-hmm. I use the Hall of Mirrors method for new people because it's fairly simple. It's like, okay, so now in your sacred place or your safe place, you're going to find like a a trail. You're going to follow the path until you come across like a clearing with a structure in it. And I always ask, is there anybody else there with you? A lot of the time, this is where their spirit guides will show up. Mm -hmm. And my spirit guide has showed up in other people's sessions too, which was interesting. They even said his name and I had never told them oh, wow. uh, his name. <laughs> so that was cool. Yeah. And then, <laughs> and then when they go in the, the structure, even if it's small on the outside, it's like vastly immense on the inside. It's just a massive hall of like mirrors mm-hmm. that they can walk up to and look into and, they'll be drawn to a mirror that can pass through it and just basically become that existence. What do you think the mirrors represent? Well, past existences or um, previous times in this life. So some people will see themselves as a kid. Some Mm -hmm. people will see their, like a woman would see herself as like an old bearded man or whatever. So like all the mirrors represent different existences. I feel I feel like I was getting in a hip <laughs> space while you were talking. <laughs> uh, <laughs> very, it was very relaxing the method that you're using. Um, so when people are creating their safe space, do they often tell you what that safe space is? Oh yeah, I have them tell me. I have them talk the whole time. It's like, it's like oh, you know, a lot of the time. What's weird is a lot of the time it's like a cabin. Which is I was going to ask if there's, a com- if there's a common safe space. <laughs> yeah, a lot of the time it's a cabin. It's very interesting. Um, a lot of people will find themselves in like a forest. I- I've seen a lot of beaches um, mm-hmm. and a lot of gardens. I haven't really seen too much else like a meadow. It's usually like a garden or a forest or a beach. And then, yeah, and then they go into the, the structures wildly wildly vary like the, okay. the the mirror structures uh, they've been pyramids they've been cabins they've been you know a, like a warehouse mm-hmm. like all sorts of different stuff it's been all sorts of stuff and it's fascinating do you feel like it's not just the hypnosis that you're doing and guiding do you feel like you're creating like a energetic space around this person in order to step into that field, if that makes sense? Well, I'm not creating anything, right? It's all the person that's doing it. Mm -hmm. I, all I am doing is guiding them through their own subconscious mind. Okay. It's all them. (laughs) So a guide. (laughs) Yeah. A guide. I would even wonder if you're helping like amplify, like you're, you're a conduit to help amplify those energies for them. Maybe I, I don't give myself that much credit. Um, because it's all, it's all the person that I'm working with. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, 
I mean, I guess potentially, but I don't really get into like energy work in that sense of like, I'm affecting your energy and stuff like that. It's all about, this is all coming from within you. Mm -hmm. Um, I do, you know, the, the purpose of the safe space is to, cause you know, sometimes, sometimes the, the death of the past life can be a little traumatic. Right. Mm -hmm. Like my, my sister did one where she was a world war two soldier and she was, she was stabbed with a bayonet and that was pretty brutal. And like the safe space, would be to be like, okay, so we're going to find yourself back in your safe place so that you're not in that scene anymore mm-hmm. so that you're safe, right? Because with hypnosis, you the last thing you want to do is cause trauma when you're healing, trying to heal somebody's trauma, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, Oriana asked, what kind of space do you hold for yourself during sessions? I just do it right here. <laughs> <laughs> or like, do you... Do you use any like protection, like prayer, or do you like talk to your guide beforehand, the one that mm. helps you out, or is there anything you do to prepare for that or hold space? No, I I, I light a candle and I okay. I, well, <laughs> I asked my guide that I asked my guide to come and show up, but that's it. I think that's great that, though. That's lighting a candle, it's like a little like ritual that you do to get in that <laughs> like headspace. What is what is the candle symbolize? uh it's literally to keep my hands warm <laughs> okay <laughs> i was gonna say something maybe they're like lighting the way as a guy <laughs> Just keep your hands i mean <laughs> once i was like this symbolizes my energy and then i was like yeah i'm not doing that anymore i'm just gonna use it to warm up my hands because it gets cold it's like it was like 12 degrees last night here mm-hmm. oh that's very cool there's a window right here so it's it's super super cold in this room right now okay well you know what everybody has their own <laughs> ways to get ready for things right and so i said i love it um do so why did you want to do this with people like what was the draw for you to be like okay i'm gonna go in and help people <laughs> heal these past lives oh at first it wasn't even about the healing at first it was about proving that they exist okay right so i was looking for evidence at first when I was doing this mm-hmm. and I found it, I got my evidence and it's slowly over time turned into, it's all about healing because when I first started, I didn't take any courses. I didn't get any certification. I didn't get any license. And I was like, Hey, Jacob to my brother. I was like, Hey, Jacob, do you want to see your past lives? And he's like, sure, I guess. And I just like, pulled up a random script and I had no idea what I was getting myself into Mm -hmm. and it was um I actually have like a little bit of regrets from that time when I was just doing it um because I didn't do it properly um and there were a couple things that happened but like yeah it was all about proving it and then it slowly morphed into oh this helps people like feel better after the fact so maybe I should start doing it in like on purpose to make people feel better and slowly morphed everything's just slowly morphed oh that's beautiful okay how far into doing this with people do you think that it switched over to like okay I believe it now like I've seen enough of it or had enough experiences where I'm like okay this this is real (laughs) it's really helping people I still second guess myself sometimes Honestly, I still am like, am I crazy? Like, I'm not crazy, right? Like, because I I, I came from a place of trying to prove it, right? And and so me going and talking about these subjects, I I have to kind of ground myself and be like, okay, like, I'm a rational person, right? Um, As far as believing it, I didn't, like, believe it, believe it until probably like six months in Mm -hmm. Um, that's when I did a regression that this this guy he he, I actually have an interview with him on my show he described this tribe in Africa down to their clothing and their culture the huts they live in the landscape they live in um, 
how they're a matriarchy, how they travel in Zimbabwe and Nambia, I think is what, or Namibia, I think. I, I don't remember. But, like, he described everything about them. Thing is, is he studied European history. Mm-hmm. In, in any history that he ever studied, he was all about European history. And he had no, I was like, so did you know about that beforehand? And he was like, no, I don't know where that came from. And with some Googling, we found the Himba tribe in Africa. They live exactly where he said they lived. He, mm-hmm. um, they have the exact same culture he described, the clothing, the huts, everything, all the same. And that's, what I was, that's the point where I was like, oh, okay, yeah, there's something to this. That's amazing. Uh, when you are doing your sessions with people and you're tapping back into those past lives, do you feel like it's the conscious here now version of them that's objectively looking at that past life? Or are you talking to the version from that past life? Both. So okay. and this is where like someone mentioned like quantum healing and stuff. I've, I've come to the belief that everything is happening right now. Mm-hmm. Right. So the, all we have is right now. And I'll go back to this to this statement like I can't prove to you that in five minutes I'm not gonna dump this water on my computer because it doesn't exist yet the future just doesn't exist because it hasn't happened yet Mm -hmm. and for all intents and purposes the past doesn't exist because it already happened Mm -hmm. all that's happening all that ever would like all that matters is like right now and so when we're in that space you can talk to these past lives you can actually take them from their their experience and put them in that safe place Mm -hmm. and and when you put them in that safe place you can give them what they need um so like this guy he um i will go back to the world war ii soldier with my sister he desperately wanted to see his pregnant wife and his daughter or no his pregnant wife and his son one more time before he before he moved on and so we took him to his house and he walked in and gave his wife a hug and went out and picked up his boy. Mm-hmm. And then he was able to get that closure because he was never able to say goodbye. And you can do that with these past lives. And it, what it does is it basically heals a part of you that's missing, right? It calls a part of you back. And then there's the, then there's the parts of, the weird parts of it, like the soul rescue or the spirit rescue part of things, Mm -hmm. which is a whole different, whole different experience. Um, I'm about to ask you about all of that. (laughs) That's going to be my next. Um, Oriana said, Brittany, have you done a session with Ian? I'm curious about your, uh, I always have a difficult time saying this, uh, aphantasia. I think that's it. (laughs) As I also have. So I have where I don't see mental images, like my psychic abilities and my gifts is feeling. So I will actually feel the experience, but I don't see things in my mindscape, if that makes sense. And so I have not done a session with Ian yet. And that is why I am asking so many questions because I'm very interested and excited in doing one. <laughs> Cause this is right up my alley. Um, so I will let you know, Oriana, after I have a session with Ian, um, <laughs> how it goes for me. Um, I'm very excited for that. Uh, I'm very interested in specifically the one uh, where you go in and you uh, have the meeting <laughs> with the with the council members, and you kind of look at like what has happened in your life thus far, and you kind of dissect that. That one sounds very interesting. <laughs> yeah, um, that that was wild. And just so you know, I also have aphantasia. Oh, I didn't and, know that. Okay. <laughs> and that guy that I told you about that described the African tribe, yeah. he also has aphantasia. Okay. <laughs> wow. Okay. So are you are you feeling all of the things as well? How do you experience that if you don't see things in your mindscape? I just, for lack of a better term, I just say things. Yeah. Right? Yeah, like, like internal I, knowing. I, yeah, I just say things. But if I was going to say anything else, it, it would be wrong. And I know it would be wrong. That, yeah, it's just like you, and you have to say it. <laughs> like, yeah, but, but when I'm saying it, it's like, am I making this up? Am I, am I, am I crazy? I can't yeah. see how many times I've been like, am I crazy? Like, am I, <laughs> no. not, I, I had, feel you, I, I understand. <laughs> done to me the other night where 
I showed up and I was a lion and I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what is this? And I went through this whole life as this lion and it was kind of cool and it was weird. And I was like, am I making this up? I was like, am I crazy? The whole time I was, I'm always second guessing myself, but yeah, I, I don't see anything. What's interesting that I, w- I want to try something, something with you real quick. Sure. If you don't mind. So if you don't mind, just like, just close your eyes for a second. Okay. And I want you to imagine yourself like sitting on the floor in your office mm-hmm. or wherever you are. Right. And then, so you have basically like five main senses or senses and the, you know, you have your hands and that's the only one that's not on your head. Mm-hmm. So I want you to kind of feel around and describe to me what your senses feel like to you like what what do you get the impression of like if you like feel your face or what what's going on with your face okay but i'm not actually feeling my face i'm no no just imagine okay describe what's going on (laughs) okay so if i am sitting on the floor and i'm feel at one i'm feeling the ground so i'm feeling the carpet in between my fingers And if I'm touching my face, uh, the first thing that I felt was like my smile lines, like near my eyes. (laughs) Okay, great. What's going on with your eyes? Uh, I feel like uh, they're squinted because I'm uh, like laughing, like smiling. And so they're like tight. (laughs) Okay. Can, Can you see anything? Uh, I can see my bed in front of me. I can see my dresser next to me. I can see my desk next to me. (laughs) I can see all the things that are in my room, but it's not like I'm actually seeing them. It's like I'm energetically feeling that they're there. Right. So, so like with your eyes, if you can't see them, are your eyes open or are they shut or are they gone or what's going on with your eyes? That's a good question. Um, (laughs) I feel like they are open, but everything is black, but I can feel the energy of the actual objects. Okay, so your eyes are open, but you're blind. Yeah, like there's 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 no vision around me. Interesting. So where where how are you sensing the energy? Like how are you energetically sensing like what is what part of you is able to see these things? I think it's my energy body around me because like I can, I, it's like I'm feeling it with my aura, if that makes sense. Like the dimensions like around me, like I know that there's like solid matter in front of me and I know what that is. So if you took, if you took me into a different scene, right, of some place that I have never been, I don't know that the experience would be different of things that I'm not used to being around, if that makes sense. I think it's because I have the imprint of what my bedroom already looks like, my office space. Okay, gotcha. And I was just curious to see because because when I did this with my my buddy, who also has aphantasia, um, he's like, oh, my eyes are like sealed shut. Mm-hmm. Like there's a, there's no seam. It's just like a flat, like smooth skin. And yeah, just... <laughs> when I when I did it, I had no eyes. And I was like, okay, I have no eyes, and that's kind of weird. But yeah, I, I always do that with people that I know have aphantasia. That's very interesting because then it's you, me, and him that did not have eyes. Like, I couldn't see. Like, I, I couldn't. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. my, it was just blank black. But I can still feel the objects, like, around me, if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah I, my friend, when he did it, his hands, he's like, oh, there's eyeballs on my hands. And I was like, what? <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> and he, he was so, he was like, yeah, but they can't see. They're not for seeing. They're for like understanding. It was so weird. I wonder if he was like sensing the chakras in his hands too. Like, because we, we have chakra points in our palms. So maybe, maybe that was something. Oriana said, Ian, what you do is so cool and interesting. I will be booking a session. <laughs> and, you know, yeah. And because you both have that too, it'll be very relatable with one another. Like how, how to work in those realms. Yeah. And it's, you know, I, I've actually had a lot of people talk to me about like, oh, God, I have aphantasia and I can't get into hypnosis with these YouTube videos. Well, the thing is, is you're not going to be able to get in. Right. 
to hypnosis with the YouTube videos because you need someone there who can help you talk. When you have aphantasia, the easiest way to bypass that is by talking out loud. So when you're meditating, you need to speak out loud as to what you're saying, you're, what you're experiencing, and then it will morph. Because um, just, just trying to imagine it is not going to work because you can't do it. Right, our imagination is different <laughs> than a lot of other people's, which is so interesting because my son, I found out like a year ago that there is 50% of the population that does not have an internal monologue. So, I don't have that. Yeah, I, it, that's so wild to me. I have an internal monologue. I talk to myself all day, just I all day long. you hear your voice long. in your head? All day long. All It's like that we're fading back. That would drive me back. insane. That would drive me <laughs> insane. I would hate that. My it's, my mind is dark and quiet and so nice. I, 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 I hated it. <laughs> that is such time, a blessing. Now I'm like, now I've, I've slowly come to realize when people talk about how they're always talking to themselves in their head, I'm like, thank God that I don't have that. I, I, don't, I don't want that. If I had a voice in my head, I would probably be freaked out. I overanalyze a lot and have a lot of conversations with myself. Uh, my son said he, you know, he doesn't have the internal monologue. He only sees pictures. Like he see, he said he sees pictures of everything. Like everything he processes through his mind is an image, which also is wild to me because I don't see images. Mm -hmm. um, and you don't see images. So how do you, how do you process through your mind if you have no voice and you don't see pictures like what's going on up there <laughs> it's a very it's like very analytical right okay people i don't i don't know if i like super buy into the whole astrology thing i'm i'm trying to get into it to, to check it out i'm gonna have someone on my show talk about it but it's it's like very analytical people I, i'm a capricorn and that's like the very analytical side of things yep. anyway. So like, I just analyze things very almost coldly sometimes, like it's almost like indifferently. Mm -hmm. And I try to like, it, it's like measuring what's gonna, like what scenario is going to come out the, the best for me or who whatever, like what scenario is going to come out the best. It's very analytical. It's not I don't like daydream because I can't and I think it like because of I can't because I can't it's like a waste of time to me like trying to daydream um I guess like because of it I'm kind of like a pessimist like I have a very pessimistic view of things um but it's it's like the attitude of prepare for the worst but hope for the best kind mm -hmm. of a thing right but yeah. I can't think any other way but it's all just like filtering it through like a strainer of getting rid of all the stuff that's not going to affect me. It's weird. I haven't really thought about it before. <laughs> that is so interesting. I, I'm an Aquarius, Aquarius Capricorn. And I know that I, I like, I love psychology and anal analytics and like logical reasoning. <laughs> right. But I also mm -hmm. love being woo esoteric, like way, way, way out there. So I have found like, I'm also a bridge balance. Like we need to have 3D and 5D, right? I'm curious what your other signs are. Um, I'll have to I'll have to get you to send me those as far as like what is your moon and your ascendant sign as well. <laughs> yeah, see, I have no idea what that even means. I, we'll find out together. I'll I'll do that with you. <laughs> um, someone said I can't imagine not having thoughts go through all day. It seems peaceful but lonely. Oh, Rebecca said that. Hey, Rebecca. <laughs> Um, do you feel that way? Like you, because me, I have myself inside. So like, I never get to a place where I'm super lonely because I always have internal me to talk to, if that makes sense. Well, well, here's the thing, Rebecca is, is we exist in this world with our whole entire body, mind and soul, right? So just because I'm missing one piece of that doesn't necessarily mean I'm lonely because I still have two other things that I can exist in this world with. Yeah. Right. Because you're not just existing in the world with your mind. You're, you're existing physically and spiritually as well. So um, I, I don't feel lonely. I feel blessed. Oh, <laughs> I love that. I wonder too, if you, cause sometimes I get up in my head 
with my internal voice and like disassociate up into myself right and so i'm wondering if you can like viscerally live more into like the present physical moment because you don't have the ability to do that if that makes sense i, I can't multitask because of it like i can't i can't do more than one thing at once it kind of sucks but like if i'm watching a movie or something mm -hmm. and my wife is like next to me trying to talk about something I will just be like zoned into the movie. <laughs> okay. And like, did you even hear a word I said? And I'd be like, yeah. Yeah, I heard everything you said. Okay, well, <laughs> what did I say? Oh, uh, okay. Uh, I don't know. That's also it's... a blessing within itself, though, because I have an internal whiteboard that I'm always putting 9,000 things on, right? <laughs> and that so sometimes I wish I could present into what's going on right now. <laughs> I'm quite forgetful. I'm quite forgetful because of it, I think. Uh, well, it's it, pros and cons for both. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, I wanted to ask you about the quantum healing and soul rescue. I know we dipped into like quantum healing. Um, if you could give everyone maybe a little explanation or what your perspective on quantum healing is before we get into soul retrieval. Well, it's super simple. And I, I think I, I said this exact thing, but it's like we only exist right now. Mm hmm anything that ever it's the concept of simultaneous time and again i'm going to go point back to dolores cannon it's i can exist now and i can exist in like the 1300s and i can exist on mars all at once and this quantum and, and you know what's interesting about it is like quantum physics has room for this like the scientific practice of quantum physics it leaves room for this of simultaneous time mm -hmm. which is interesting that there's like a scientific loophole showing that it's theoretically possible mm -hmm. um but we exist at the same time so if i'm healing a, a world war ii soldier then he's actually being healed uh, right now that's the concept of quantum healing is like i'm not just i'm not going back in time I'm moving sideways through time to get to a relevant thing. And this kind of ties in with the spirit rescue too, because how I first figured out that, that this is a thing. Um, I was regressing my sister just to practice. And I don't want to talk about the life that she saw because it's very depressing and it's very sad. And it, it kind of like, for lack of a better term, like triggers me because <laughs> I feel so horrible. Okay. But um, it was a little girl and she died in a horrible, horrible way. And midway through the regression, she goes, Ian, and I go, what? And she goes, I don't think I'm one of Taylor's past lives. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, <clears throat> okay, well, what are you? And she goes, I think I'm a visitor here. And I was like, what i was like mm -hmm. okay well how did you get here and this was when i was first starting and it freaked me out i actually stopped doing regressions for a while because of this and she's like I, I think i'm a visitor here and i was invited here and i was like i didn't invite you i was like who okay. invited you and she was like i don't know <clears throat> i don't know um the thing with it though is like my sister's spirit guide was there the whole entire time um watching and observing and I didn't understand what was actually going on. And now I understand that these, um, these spirits or visitors that come through, they need to be healed, right? Mm -hmm. This girl was looking for healing for, for her, traumatic, her traumatic death that she had. And because I didn't know and I was scared, I um, was unable to help her. And I actually really, really regret that because I didn't know what I was doing and I didn't know about it. And, and now when this happens, um, if you've ever talked to Fiona Harris, I don't know if you ever have, she's super, super cool. She was talking to me about this phenomenon and it happened to her where she healed a spirit and she was like, Oh, I just, I just felt a ghost leave a haunted house. And I was like, really? She was like, yeah, mm -hmm. I felt like there was a house that was haunted <clears throat> by this piece of a soul. And they're not like full souls, right? They're just like little shards. Mm -hmm. 
there was a haunted house that was being haunted by this soul shard, for lack of a better term, and that that shard returned to its source, and it's the house is no longer haunted. Mm-hmm. And that opened up a whole new perspective for me, and I was like, oh, so that's what this is. It's like we're healing, we're healing people, not just this part of them, but people that are like alive right now are getting mm-hmm. peace returned to them, right? I had my first experience with that a while back and it was really, really interesting and it's super out there and it's super weird. Basically, I came into this life, you know, I was being, I was being regressed. So I was the one doing the soul rescue, right? I was the (laughs) vessel for lack of a better term. Um, I went back and it was like the 1860s or something like that. It was a gentleman named Bart and he went on like a, an excursion, like a classic coming of age excursion Mm -hmm. where he was uh, basically going into the wild with his, uh, his brand new Winchester rifle. That's what he said. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) And he's like, my pa bought me this rifle. And uh, he went up and he was hunting and he's like, I'm almost out of shot. So I'm making my way back, back down South because he lived down South. And I'm, I, I think he was pretty far up. I think he was like almost by Canada. Okay. Somewhere. And anyway, he he kept talking to me about how he had like just the most beautiful day and how he found like a game trail that was going in the exact direction he was heading. So he followed it like all day. It was just like the perfect like coincidence that he found it and he was he was like, I got my I bagged myself a rabbit and I made some stew and he was talking about hard tack and he didn't like call it hard tack. But he's like I threw I threw that in the stew and I I made a stew and I ate it. And I was like, great. What a nice day. Right. Mm -hmm. And then to make a a very long story short, he got murdered by a Sasquatch that night. Wow. Okay. Which was weird. It was really weird. And then I, Ian was removed from his body before the Sasquatch ripped him apart. And then the Sasquatch, after he ripped him apart, looked at me, Ian, and then I felt like massive pressure in my head and I felt like uh, getting psychically attacked, which was really weird. And I don't like talking about it because people think I'm crazy. But like, I don't even want to go in the woods anymore because they're out there and they're psychic and they're, they're crazy. Like the Sasquatch. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a very intense experience. Were you, were wild. you embodying his like body during that experience? Or were you observing what was going on or both? No. I was basically giving him a voice. Okay. So these, you know, these pieces, they come through and they, they have a voice and, and they, they talk through you. And I, I know it wasn't like he was, he was in my body, but he was talking to me and I was saying what he wanted to Mm -hmm. say. So they don't like take over your body. That's a huge myth. Right. They're not taking over your consciousness. They're just kind of coming in as a guest. I was even able to. (laughs) I was even able to step in and like give him words. It was really weird because he was talking about his tent and he's like, it's not plastic, whatever that means. I don't, I don't know what that means. I just learned that word. Wow. Okay. So you can interact with them with my sister, with that little girl. She actually started talking about movies. She was like, I didn't know what a movie was until just now. That's interesting. Oh, wow. So you so can like, like shared consciousness. <laughs> yeah, it's like that. Like yeah. You, you lend them your um, your voice, basically, and they can talk through you. And, and with this Bart guy, he would just wanted someone there with him so that he didn't have to die alone. He was Aww. basically, from what I understand, caught in a loop in the forest somewhere. Mm-hmm this energy that he was, was just dying over and over, reliving that day over and over and over again. And then he was finally able to, to move on because we helped him to feel heard and feel safe again. Why? And that's do what think, soul rescue is. Why do you think these spirits are coming through like you or other people, like when they're having their own personal experiences and now like a whole soul has like popped in why do you think that they're coming through other people's healing sessions? It's it's like healing yourself and healing others is the same thing. 
Yeah. They're not just no. randomly <laughs> they're not just randomly showing up. They're being brought to you by your guides. They're they're bring your guides are bringing them to you to help. They're not it's not random, right? <clears throat> like, like a like, like a mirror reflection healing. Like there's something maybe within that soul that needs to be healed that's going to heal you as well. If you can if you can heal somebody then you can heal yourself, right? Mm -hmm. And it, it's like knowing that it's if you've healed somebody else, you can now have the confidence to heal yourself. Um, there's that piece of it, but there's also the piece of it that's like, how else are these people going to get hurt? Right? How else are these stories like that little girl? She was basically murdered by a serial killer. Like how how else would that come out? It couldn't, right? And so it, they're being brought to you so that that piece of that person can get closure um, by your guides. And, and it's, it's all about healing the hand or the collective consciousness. I was going to say healing the collective consciousness, which is you. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, that's, that's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. It, it doesn't really happen to like first timers a lot actually mm -hmm. probably ever most first timers go into their own past lives it's it's only like people who are open to it and people who have have gone through multiple regressions that really get that happening to them that's very interesting i have started do, uh, offering a new service to people where i'm going in and finding past versions of them but in the present day. So it might be like eight year old you, 10 year old you, 20 year old you, right? And somewhere in the timeline and they're caught in energetic timestamps. So they never healed and processed through the emotions. You have to bypass to survive sometimes. And so they are reliving that situation over and over and over again, which is pushing forward behavioral patterns and triggers into your present day. So let's say like a child was told like money is the root of all evil, right? And logic adult you knows that that's not true. But that version of you that's caught in that interject timestamp that's hearing that over and over and over again is pushing those behavioral patterns forward into now. And so we, we go in <laughs> and speak with that version and kind of break it off as its own consciousness form and speak to it and heal it from that timeline. And so it lets go of all of the stuff that you're experiencing in the now. And so it's it kind of sounds like that, but different, <laughs> like in its own flavor. And I'm wondering now, like if I'm going to experience something like that, as far as like another soul being coming through to have healing done. That sounds exactly like the core realignment that I do. It's neuro linguistic programming. Mm -hmm. You're basically teaching your brain to reroute the way it thinks. Yep. It's like, it's like this. It's like, so how it works, kind of like what you said, first, you have to feel that feeling, right? Mm -hmm. You have to feel that feeling. And we, I also do that same thing where we break it off into its own consciousness. A lot of the time it's fairly young, like four or five, six. And then you ask that. So what's, what is the point? What's the purpose? What's the goal of you feeling this anxiety what are you trying to accomplish by feeling this anxiety or, or whatever or this fear or or whatever it is right mm -hmm. and a lot of the time they'll tell you like let's just say if it's anxiety um it's like i want to feel safe right so it's like okay great so now i want you to step in and embody the feeling of feeling safe i want you to just feel that and and even if you have to like pretend just feel safe because mm -hmm. you can do it like you're doing it right you're doing the anxiety why can't you do the safe feeling right mm -hmm. and once you've felt safe you can't like unfeel that it's like if you've eaten an orange you can't uneat yep. an orange you, you don't know you can't like untaste an orange so you work up this ladder of like okay so now we felt safe what's the next step up from there what's that going to unlock for you it's like okay well now i can like live my life okay yep. Step into that feeling of living your life. And then you work all the way up this ladder until you get to a point where you're basically just like, there's nothing else. You've accomplished all of your goals and you felt it. And you're like, oh, I'm, I'm literally just existing right now. 
there's nothing happening and everything happening and I'm just present in the moment. And that's the point where you want to get to. And that's actually how I personally meditate is I'll talk out loud and, and work through these emotions and work through these steps all the way up until I'm like, okay, I'm just existing. And that's exactly what you're talking about. It's like neuro-linguistic programming, right? And it's mm -hmm. super powerful, super powerful. And it's, it's a little different from the soul rescue because you're healing yourself. Absolutely. It, it has really working with my past versions and healing them through those time sounds and building like an internal family program like system within me I had like really <laughs> fast tracked and like accelerated my healing because it's almost like now I have a whole team of people supporting one another and like growing where it is. It's not just like me, if that makes sense. <laughs> but that's also where my yeah. internal voice comes in handy <laughs> because I'll just yeah. be talking to them all day. Um, so Ian, I know we're coming up close on time here. I want to make sure we get where everybody can uh, follow you in your podcast and listen. It's amazing. And where they can get a session with you. Like where, where can we find you? <laughs> um, I'm on all platforms. I'm on Spotify, Apple podcasts. I'm on Google podcasts, all that stuff. I have like a subreddit. Okay. <laughs> so I have. <laughs> I have a Facebook group and all of it is the regression session. Um, uh, the podcast as of right now is called the regression session, a guide to past lives and the metaphysical. Um, so you can just check that out pretty much anywhere and you'll find it. Like even if you type in the regression session on Google, it'll pull it up. And then as far as like sessions right now, I don't have a website. Um, for that because it's down um, still being worked on for, for like a I guess like the regression session dot com is not a thing yet but it's going to be soon but for like sessions and stuff it's just the regression session at gmail dot com you can email me it's in every single episode my email it's in there twice every single time so um, pretty easy to get in contact with me I respond to every email that comes through Oh, perfect. Oh, and I'll have shy. that. Oh, go ahead. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I, said, I said, don't be shy. You can email me all you want. And I'll have all of uh, Ian's information as well in the description. <laughs> if anybody would like to contact him. Sweet. <laughs> yes. Um, and then this will also be posted the replay on YouTube. If anybody would like to watch from all the way through, <laughs> if you're now, just now joining us. Um, and Ian, I am so honored that you came on today. This is absolutely wonderful. It was so much fun talking about all of these uh, metaphysical things with you. Um, and I hope you enjoyed it as well. And thank you to everybody that came to uh, join in with us. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. It was a lot of fun uh, talking and like interacting with people while talking. So. Yes. And then I'm definitely going to book a session with you too. <laughs> yeah, I'm very excited for that. <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, thank you everyone. And we hope you have a wonderful day. Bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.